last thing we'll cover are chest wall assessments. Now we're looking at more like mobility deficits here and things things of that nature. Um, so the first thing you may, we're going to want to do is just palpate um, the thoracic wall. So you know palpation is indicated anytime has a patient has chest pain. Or if we observe a mass on inspection, again that's why inspection is so important. Is you know do, you can do so much of your examination even before you start putting your hands on the patient. Uh, we're going to look for tenderness or masses. You know assess for crepitus of the tissue. You know, are there a large, you know, are the thoracic muscles, you know, and normal and robust? Um, so that we're thinking of like our lats or pecs and stuff like that. Um, looking at across the cartilages, are those like, you know, irritated? If we palpate on them. Um, again, we want to palpate the ribs for tenderness, swelling, crepitus, um, or pain on compression. Well, and you'll learn more about some of this stuff in your manual therapy coursework, probably your musculoskeletal coursework. Um, but again, just remembering, um, you know, Palpation is still a part of the chest exam for, for patients with respiratory conditions as well. And there's just some examples of your surface anatomy. Um, now, rib palpation, I do want to stress this. The first rib cannot be palpated below the clavicle in, in most individuals. So um, the first intercostal space may be, may be felt um, above the second rib, but the first rib is usually like kind of trapped on the clavicle. The, the second rib, therefore, if you're trying to you know, number your ribs, is probably the, the best one to go by. And you can find that by finding that angle of lewd, which again is that, that ridge between the um, sternal and the manubrium, or we call that the sternal manubrial you know, junction. Um, and then we can find our other ribs after we found our second rib by kind of climbing down. So I recommend, you know, you've probably done this in your intro course work, work but it's always good to just get better at, you know, get at palpation, because um, that's where our landmarks are, right, when we're auscultating, okay? Um, you know, the lowest rib on each side to articulate the sternum, again, is, is usually the seventh. So again, we have those, you know, false ribs or floating ribs, um, and then our true ribs as well, right? So again, it's remembering our, our different landmarks. Um, when we get into looking for rib fractures, a quick test we can utilize, the compression test. So this, you can either have the patient with their, um, you know, arms down or by the side, and you're going to basically kind of compress. Now, if we know the ribs are intact, Right from on side to side at the anterior and posterior, or the sternal and um, spinal um, articulations. If we press on the sternum, if there's a fracture here, right, it's going to mobilize that fracture and it's going to hurt. So this can sometimes be useful for um, assessing a fracture if it's intact without having to press directly on uh, the rib cage. So it's something to think about as well. Okay. Now, if we're assessing chest wall mobility, there's a couple different ways we can look at, look at it. Again, it's remembering you know the normal movements that we see um, or observe in those in those areas. So, uh, thoracic wall mobility we can assess by looking at symmetry, which is a very easy way. Um, basically, what we're going to do is place our hands on the chest um, and see how well our thumbs move apart from side to side. Again, typically for most people, this should be fairly symmetrical. Again, maybe with a slight differences here and there. Um, there may be certain areas or certain conditions um, where the, you know, the reeds in the chest walls don't move as well. We talked again about pneumothoraxes. We talked again about really bad pleural effusions where there's just, just very inadequate ventilation. So this can kind of be nice there to see how well, you know, there's one side moving versus the other. Now, this is a very general assessment. Again, you know, always follow it up with more specific stuff. Breath sounds are a big one. Um, and then again, we, we, we do it by placing our thumbs and just looking at how well they move apart from each other. Is this symmetrical? This, this assessment is looking for symmetry. We're not quantifying movement here. We're looking for symmetry of movement to see is one side you know, ventilating adequately. And again, there can be conditions where that doesn't happen, like a pneumothorax or a really severe maybe consolidation or pleural effusion where there is just impaired expansion um, due to you know, infiltration of fluid or, or mucus of some kind. Um, but if we wanted to get quantifiable, there's, there's ways to do it in a very rough assessment. Now, there are very super instrumented ways to look at chest wall movement, probably not super you know, necessary for clinic use. Um, what you can do is just take a very uh, rough estimate of how well a chest wall expands going from full expiration to inspiration. So we can look at you know, displacement. So basically what we do is we place our tape measure around a known landmark. The best one, the most reliable one would be the xiphoid. Uh, but you can use the axilla or you can use you know, different intervals you know, between the, you know, the, the axilla and the xiphoid, but you want or is that axilla and the umbilicus. Uh, but we probably want to look at, again, you know, the xiphoid is probably our, our best bang for a buck. And then we're going to assess the distance covered from a full inspiration to expiration. 
and a normal uh, excursion for most people should be about two to three inches or four to three centimeters, a rough estimate. Um, and again, this is a way for us to see this, you know, is there enough chest wall expansion um, in these patients? And maybe that's something that you can drive your treatment towards improving. So we covered quite a few things in these series of lectures. Um, I do want you guys to start thinking about, like, what are some things that we might see in certain conditions, like a patient with a heart failure exacerbation, or a patient with a rib fracture, um, or a patient with a, you know, a high spinal cord lesion? And think about how, what might they present with, and what are some examinations we might want to assess uh, to see how well the respiratory system is performing. Uh, so with that, that is chest examination in a nutshell. Again, the biggest thing for this one is to practice, get good at your landmarks, get good at understanding what normal is. Um, so it makes it easier to understand what is um, abnormal when you're, when you're facing it. So uh, thank you so much, guys.